Get free tech advice for your business from O2 Gurus. Search O2 Business for more. Hey guys, welcome to B-Tech. It's Basil here with the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 and having just unboxed it, I thought I'd talk you through the setup process. You can very clearly see the Note 4 is at the first screen and it might seem like it's pretty obvious. You can select your language and your dialect, but accessibility options are something that not a lot of people tap into. Here, obviously you're gonna cater for people who have vision and hearing impairments, but you've also got a whole bunch of other stuff you can control. We're gonna start from the bottom because you can see this is probably the most relevant to the wider audience and you've got text to speech option, sure, which you may not need, but you've also got things like negative colors. Negative colors is gonna flip white to black, etc., as the name suggests, but for an AMOLED screen device, this is actually quite useful. It'll also download widgets in their negative colors too. Um, so negative colors will reduce power consumption because black, for anyone who doesn't know, tends to use a little bit less power. It's also gonna have increased contrast, as you can see, um, and be less blinding. You've also got notification reminders hover zoom so if you hover over an element of the UI it just zooms on it and magnification gestures and you can also control your font size. You also have talkback which um, makes certain elements speak to you rather than having you read them. If we tap through on hearing, you can have flash notification, so it flashes a camera light when you receive a notification, incoming call, etc. Um, so that when the phone's on its front, you'll still be able to see it. You've also got the option to turn off all sounds um, and have subtitles on certain applications if indeed you are visually impaired. There's also other elements like mono audio, so you can switch from stereo to mono when using earphones, and auto haptic feedback, so vibration when you touch the display. Dexterity, um, this is where you've got things like air wake up, tap and hold. So if you wanna really make sure you've held what you're holding, you can long press the um, screen and you can control the amount of time you need to press the screen in order to ensure it registers a tap. Scrolling down, direct access, answering and ending calls. Answering and ending calls is actually quite useful. So you can access um, calls by pressing the home key, using voice commands or pressing the power key will end a call. And scrolling down, that's pretty much the key accessibility options. Hopefully, like us, you were kind of surprised that a lot of that goes beyond just people with impairments. You can also see this is where you power off your phone, turn on your SIM card, or search for a Wi-Fi network. Flip Wi-Fi on, it'll search for all your available networks, and we can tap through and enter our details. Once you've set up your passcode, it'll obtain the IP address and connect you to your Wi-Fi network. And it won't actually move the screen automatically. You've got to press the next button and you're going to be presented with the option to have a manual or an automatic date and time. If you go for manual, you can override this and then you can also select your time zone. We've got everything set to auto because it's got everything right for us. Scrolling to the next screen and you're going to have a bunch of stuff that you can agree to. First things first, allow Google to regularly check device activity, et cetera, for um, privacy settings. You can change this later. If you press decline, nothing bad will happen, don't worry. You also have to select to agree to Samsung's terms and conditions for their user interface. But one, one thing you don't have to do is agree to provide diagnostic data and usage. So if you're concerned about your privacy and don't wanna do that, press no thanks. But for us, where this is a review device, so we're gonna press yes. The more we provide Samsung with, the better they can make their next firmware, hopefully. Next, we'll jump back so you can see exactly what we just did there. Got Google, do you have a Google account in Password. Are you coming from an Android phone or indeed an iPhone which had a Google email address attached to it? So if you've got a Google address, this is where you enter it. So that's what we're gonna do. Once you're signed in, again, you've got a couple of options. If you're coming from an Android phone, you've got the option to back up and restore your applications and a few passwords, etc. Wi-Fi passwords. You can select this. We tend not to because it tends to throw a whole load of stuff onto our phone. So we're going to uncheck that checkbox. You can also control your location access. Let apps better determine your location. Um, and you can also have um, information collected and sent to Google. Now, this might panic you a little bit but um, we kind of leave this on for a couple of reasons. The reason we leave this on mainly is so that when we have Google Maps, for example, um, we use our exact location rather than our triangulated location. And this means that if we are lost, we indeed can be better found. Um, you can untap this though. Um, nothing bad will happen beyond the application um, accuracy, for example. Finally, communications, do you want emails and offers from Google Play? You've given them your email address right there by uh, signing in, so they've got it. So tap this and you will get offers from Google Play. Again, something we tend to leave tapped because we've tapped it once and uh, ticked, sorry, 
and there's no harm keeping it ticked. We're also gonna check our location stuff as well and carry on going forward. Any privacy questions, you'll want to look into that as a separate issue. As far as the next element goes, enter your name and you're setting up your phone. Now, after the Google sign-in, you have a whole other sign-in process, and this is Samsung sign-in. There's a couple of reasons you'll want to either create an account or sign in with your existing account. Mainly Galaxy Gifts. Samsung gives you a whole load of free stuff um, in the form of applications such as subscriptions for new services and um, applications and you've got a year's subscription for Evernote for example. Not sure if it's with this device but with other devices certainly. So if you do have an account, click sign in. Once you're signed in, you can restore data from another device and have auto backup switched on. This isn't quite as comprehensive and won't work necessarily as accurately. If you do tap restore, then it will give you an option uh, to access other devices that have been backed up and you can see we have a fair few. We're gonna actually cancel that um, and as we don't really have any, and you can see exactly what it would back up and what it would restore. Phone logs, messages, SMS and MMS, wallpaper, priority sender, spam address, spam, all these are things that we don't tend to use too much. So we can jump out of that. We don't even want to switch auto backup on and we can press next to speed up the process. Finally, thank you, Samsung Galaxy Note device. And you can also see you can switch on easy mode here. Easy mode, if we tap through to learn more, is a very simple mode that allows you to have only a few key icons on the display, a few key home screens, contacts on one home screen, shortcuts to an application on another, and it should be a really nice option if you're giving this phone to someone who's maybe not so tech savvy as we're sure you are. So if we press on finish, you can see it's taking us to our home screens and you've got your array of home screens and on the left hand side you've got briefing, flipboard briefing, so top news all in one place. You've also got a pull down notifications tray and we can clear all our notifications and you also have applications as you can see. So that has been a setup process with the Samsung Galaxy Note 4. If you've got any questions about anything we've talked about, fire them in the comments section below. If you like the video, click like and if you like BTECT in general, subscribe. Thanks for watching.